In less than 24 hours, a single straw factory can produce 50 million units, a number that surpasses the population of more than 100 countries worldwide. Behind this seemingly ordinary everyday item lies a relentless race of precision and speed measured down to millionths of an inch, where plastic is melted, stretched, and cut at ultra-high speed to create millions of nearly identical pieces with errors so small they are almost immeasurable. An object often dismissed as disposable waste is, in reality, one of the most densely mass-produced products on the planet. In this video, join the factor in as we step inside this high-speed industrial production line to uncover the full journey behind the familiar drinking straw you use every single day. Every year, humanity consumes up to 700 billion drinking straws, the equivalent of 2 billion straws every single day. Yet behind this staggering volume lies a multi-billion dollar paradox. Despite its overwhelming output, the global straw industry generates only 25 billion US dollars in annual revenue. However, this seemingly solid industrial empire was violently shaken by a single shocking moment in 2015. The widely shared footage of a sea turtle in extreme distress with a plastic straw lodged deep inside its nostril. The incident ignited a global backlash, triggering widespread boycotts, regulatory bans, and a dramatic shift in consumer behavior. Faced with mounting pressure, the plastic straw industry was forced to either evolve or disappear entirely. This turning point opened the door to a new generation of alternatives. Biodegradable plastic straws made from self-degrading materials, as well as paper, metal, bamboo, and other environmentally friendly solutions designed to replace one of the most controversial everyday objects on Earth. Before entering the production line, workers are required to follow a strict sanitation protocol. All personnel change into specialized uniforms, wear protective caps, put on face masks, and fully cover their hair in accordance with safety and hygiene standards. Before stepping into the manufacturing area, each worker uses a lint roller to remove any dust, loose fibers, or stray hairs clinging to their clothing. In this environment, even a single speck of dust falling onto the production line is unacceptable. These hygiene procedures are not only about keeping the factory clean, but about ensuring that drinking straws remain safe for direct contact with beverages. This step is mandatory, and only after meeting every requirement are workers permitted to enter the production area. The manufacturing process begins with raw plastic in the form of tiny pellets, each roughly the size of a grain of rice. For environmentally friendly drinking straws, factories use materials such as PLA, PHA, or other bio-based plastics derived from starch, engineered to naturally break down after use. First, operators scoop the plastic pellets and feed them directly into the machine's hopper. The hopper lid is then sealed tightly to minimize any contact between the raw material and the surrounding air. From the hopper, the pellets move into a primary heating stage, where temperature is carefully controlled to remove all residual moisture. This drying step is critical, as even trace amounts of moisture can lead to air bubbles, surface defects, or structural flaws during the extrusion process that follows. From the material feeding system, plastic pellets are conveyed directly into the plastic extruder. The core unit considered the heart of the entire production line. As soon as the machine starts, the internal rotating screw begins to turn continuously, simultaneously pushing the material forward while applying steady controlled compression. Along the length of the extruder barrel, multiple heating zones operate in sequence, gradually raising the temperature of the pellets. At approximately 392 degrees Fahrenheit, the plastic transitions from a solid state into a fully molten, homogeneous flow, reaching the consistency required for precise forming. Once the molten plastic stream stabilizes, it is forced through a forming die mounted at the head of the extruder, shaping the material into a continuous, straight, and perfectly round tube that moves forward without interruption along the production line. At this stage, the control system closely monitors the inner diameter, 
wall thickness, and overall dimensions of the tube. Even the slightest deviation at this point can propagate through the downstream processes, affecting the quality of every straw produced afterward. Immediately after exiting the forming dye, the drinking straw remains extremely hot and soft. If it is not stabilized right away, within just a few seconds the continuous tube can deform, warp, or bend out of shape. To control this critical stage, the straw is guided directly from the dye head into a long, cooling water bath, where the water temperature is maintained at a precisely calculated level. As the straw enters the bath, the water rapidly absorbs the residual heat still trapped within the molten plastic. The temperature of the tube decreases gradually from the outer surface toward the core, allowing the material to transition smoothly from a molten state to a solid form without thermal shock or the buildup of internal stress. Throughout the cooling process, a coordinated system of rollers, guide wheels, and alignment rails operates continuously to keep the straw moving along a perfectly straight axis. These components ensure that the tube does not twist, vibrate, or drift off course, because even a slight deviation at this stage can affect the diameter or roundness of the straw along its entire length. Immediately after leaving the water bath, the continuous tube passes through a compact air drying unit, where streams of pressurized air are blown along the surface of the straw to remove any remaining water. Only after completing both the cooling and drying stages does the straw truly achieve dimensional stability, ready to move forward into the next phase of high-speed industrial production. After the cooling stage, the drinking straw is fed into a synchronized puller system. This system is responsible for drawing the continuous tube forward at a precisely controlled speed, accurate down to fractional percentages. The pulling belts rotate continuously, applying a steady and uniform tensile force that moves the straw along the production line, while simultaneously regulating the pulling distance to ensure that the wall thickness and inner diameter remain consistent throughout the entire length. If the pulling speed is too fast, the straw becomes excessively thin and mechanically weak. If the speed is too slow, the material can swell, distort, or lose its intended shape. For this reason, the system must constantly maintain a delicate balance between pulling speed and the physical state of the material, producing drinking straws that are straight, structurally stable, and dimensionally consistent, without warping, thinning, or size variation during real-world use. Once the shape and dimensions of the continuous straw tube have been brought under stable control, the entire line is fed directly into a high-speed automatic cutting machine. This is one of the fastest paced stages in the entire production line. Here, the cutting blade system operates in pre-programmed cycles, continuously rising and falling with absolute precision, slicing the endless tube into short segments of fixed length. The most common cut lengths are approximately 7 or 8 inches, corresponding to standard beverage use requirements. However, behind these seemingly simple numbers lies an extremely demanding synchronization challenge. The cutting machine does not operate independently. It must be perfectly coordinated with the extrusion speed, the cooling rate, and most critically, the puller speed from the upstream stages. A change in any one of these variables requires the cutting rhythm to be adjusted immediately. What matters here is not speed alone, but timing. Each blade strike must land at the exact moment the moving tube passes through the cutting point at a precisely calculated velocity. If the blade drops even a fraction of a second too early, the straw becomes too short. If it strikes too late, the straw exceeds its intended length. At high production speeds, such deviations can multiply rapidly, producing tens of thousands of defective pieces in just a few minutes. That is why sensor systems and the central control unit continuously monitor the tube's travel speed and adjust the cutting rhythm in real time. Under stable operating conditions, hundreds of straws can be cut within seconds, each with nearly identical length, before immediately dropping onto the next conveyor. At this stage, precision does more than define appearance. It directly affects the user experience. Even a barely noticeable variation in length is enough to stand out when a single straw is placed alongside millions of others on the market. After the straw tube has been cut to its standard length, 
The sections intended for bendable straws are transferred to a dedicated folding and corrugation machine. This is the stage that defines the straw's flexibility and real-world usability. As the straw moves continuously through the system, forming dies and pressure rollers engage directly with the tube surface. Under carefully calculated pressure, the softened plastic deforms in a controlled manner, gradually forming a series of accordion-style folds evenly distributed around the entire circumference of the straw. This process requires precise synchronization between line speed, applied pressure, and material temperature. If the pressure is too high, the straw may thin out or crack at the folding points. If the pressure is too low, the folds will lack definition, making the straw difficult to bend or unable to hold its shape. These engineered folds allow users to adjust the drinking angle effortlessly, especially for children or when consuming beverages on the move. More importantly, even after repeated bending, the internal flow channel remains open and unobstructed, preventing collapse or blockage. It is a small design detail, but one that plays a critical role in the everyday experience of billions of straws used around the world. After the forming process is fully completed, the drinking straws are transferred directly into the quality inspection stage. At this point, the weight, length, and diameter of each straw are measured and carefully compared against the technical specifications. Under high-intensity lighting, even subtle defects, such as uneven cut edges, residual burrs, or inconsistent wall thickness, become immediately visible. In advanced production lines, online monitoring systems continuously compare real-time measurements with reference standards, allowing any straws that fail to meet requirements to be automatically removed from the production line. After passing quality inspection, the drinking straws are transferred directly into the automated packaging line, where the process splits into two parallel paths. For bulk packaging, automated systems count and group approximately 300 straws per pack, place them into biodegradable packaging, and heat seal the bags in one continuous cycle. Running alongside this process is the individual packaging line. Each straw is fed sequentially into a wrapping machine, where biodegradable film is pulled forward, the straw is positioned precisely on top. A second layer of film is applied, and the material is cut into individual sealed packets. Every single unit is fully enclosed directly on the production line, ready for immediate use. All packaging materials are made from paper or environmentally friendly alternatives, aligning with the industry's shift away from single-use plastics. Once packaging is complete, the straw packs are placed into cardboard cartons, labeled and transferred to storage. From here, the products are ready to leave the factory and begin their journey to cafes, retail outlets, and beverage manufacturers around the world. Unlike plastic straws, the manufacturing process of paper straws does not begin with molten plastic pellets, but with large rolls of food-grade paper. These massive paper rolls are first fed into cutting and rewinding systems. Here, the paper is slid into strips with precisely controlled widths, then rewound into smaller rolls designed specifically for the tube-forming machines. Even a minor deviation in paper width can compromise the stability of the entire product. From these smaller rolls, the paper is continuously fed into the production line through an automated feeding system. This system maintains a steady, uninterrupted material flow, preventing jerks or misalignment, and allowing the line to operate at high speed without stopping. As the paper enters the tube-forming machine, its surface is coated with a thin layer of food-safe adhesive using a dedicated roller application system. This adhesive must meet strict safety standards for direct contact with beverages while remaining strong enough to resist moisture during use. Immediately afterward, the paper strips are spirally wound around a rapidly rotating forming mandrel. With each rotation, another layer of paper overlaps the previous one, gradually building the multi-layer tubular structure characteristic of paper straws. Every motion in this winding, pressing, and shaping sequence is precisely synchronized. Wall thickness, layer bonding, and water resistance are all determined at this stage. 
Once formed, the continuous paper tube is guided into an automatic cutting machine. Here, blades operate at fixed intervals, dividing the tube into straws of standard length. These freshly cut straws then move into a drying system where hot air circulates continuously, fully curing the adhesive and locking the paper layers firmly together. After drying, the paper straws are cooled, sorted, and inspected for quality. Final packaging and control steps follow processes similar to those used for plastic straws, completing the product before it leaves the factory. Ready to replace single-use plastic in billions of drinks served every day. A drinking straw is such a familiar object that we rarely stop to think about how it is made. Yet behind that small, lightweight tube lies a continuously operating production line, where every detail is tightly controlled and no margin for error is allowed. And perhaps the next time you hold a straw in your hand, you will see it differently. Not just as a simple disposable item, but as the result of an entire engineering system working relentlessly behind the scenes.